Electric cars. Some people say that in winter, and I mean not an Australian winter, but a proper winter like you guys get in Europe and in North America, that electric cars, their range is terrible. I mean, you can't get, you can't have them, own them in a lot of, you know, very, really, really, really cold countries because they lose too much range. Battery degradation is an issue. Range is an issue. Battery capacity, blah, 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 blah. Is this actually true? Well, a study of thousands of electric cars says, no, it's not. Is it true that you can lose some of the range in winter? Yes, it is, but it's not as big as a percentage as the media have been claiming for years, of course. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. If you'd like to join the, the channel, you can become a YouTube member and get access to my personal health protocol, my 10 different health rules that can well improve your lifespan and health span. And I find them as things that I think every everyone should be doing. So I'll put a link in the description below. On average, electric vehicle models lose around 20% of their range in freezing temperatures, according to Recurrent, an EV battery range and analytics company. So Recurrent, uh, an amazing, amazing company. These guys do these studies based on pure data, not anecdotal crap that you see all over the social media and all over the internet. Oh, this one guy. No, this one guy. Check out this one guy. It happened to this one guy. So therefore, it must be true, of course. If one thing happens to one person, that doesn't make it true for everyone. That's the great thing about Recurrent. They actually look at data from all EVs. The Tesla Model X surprisingly had the best range of the EVs included in the study. It kept 89% of its normal range in freezing temperatures. The Volkswagen ID4 was the worst, maintaining a staggeringly low 63% of its stated range. Now, the Volkswagen ID4 would not have come last, but unfortunately, Recurrent didn't look at any data from the Toyota BZ4X. We know that from test drives, uh, big ones from major organizations in Norway and Denmark and Finland, that the Toyota BZ4X, when it's cold, loses around 50% of its range. It's terrible in the cold. Recurrent based its findings on real world data collected from telematics and other onboard devices from more than 18,000 cars. So this is the largest study ever done of its kind, more than 18,000. The data used in the study was collected during winter 2024 and 2025. It comprises 22 models from 11 brands and eight automakers, including versions of Tesla's with and without heat pumps that usually increase an EV's range. Looking at this information, it, it is quite fascinating to see just how much better the Model X, the Tesla Model X and the Model S are than many other EVs from other automakers. However, the Audi e-tron came in third place ahead of the Tesla Model 3 and the Tesla Model Y. Not by much though. In fact, it beat the Tesla Model 3 by 0.1 of a percentage point. In other words, they were basically even. You can see here from the list, the Model X was in first, Model S in second, the Audi e-tron in third, followed by the Tesla Model 3 and the Tesla Model Y. Next was the Hyundai Ioniq 5. So yeah, you've got some cars that have done really, really well. Which are the bad cars for winter? Which are the cars you probably don't want to buy if you live in a cold place, if you live in Canada, uh, if you live in Alaska, if you live in Russia? Anyway, cold places, yeah, don't get these models. The Ford F-150 Lightning. The F-150 Lightning only maintained 74% of its original charge. That's um, surprising. Chevrolet Equinox is pretty bad as well. 74% for the Equinox. Cadillac Lyric is bad at 72%. Wow, well, they're all GM and uh, Ford cars here in the worst ones. Chevrolet Bolt is 69%. So Bolt's not great either. Ford Mustang Mach-E is 66%. And the Volkswagen ID4 was worse than all of them at 63%. Now, like I said, I think the Toyota BZ4X would come last. Now, models without heat pumps. You can see here in the list, the red ones, the red models here have a heat pump. So the Rivian R1S has no heat pump. The Rivian R1T doesn't either. The Tesla Model 3 in this list, that's an older version of the Model 3, which actually got 79%. Now, the newer version of the Model 3 with a heat pump got 87%. That's a big difference. 79 versus 87%. That's an 8% battery difference. 
Tesla Model S as well, the old version of the Model S, big difference here, 77%, whereas the new version of the Model S actually got 88%. That's an 11% difference between the old Model S and the new Model S. Kind of interesting to know if you're going to buy an older EV, the difference in efficiency. So what is, to me, quite remarkable is the fact the Chevrolet Equinox and the Cadillac Lyric both claim they have heat pumps, but they're losing a lot of battery range in winter. So if you're in a cold climate, you, I can't possibly say that those would be the best cars to get unless you don't need to drive very far because um, that's a fair bit of battery loss. Looking at, you know, 28% battery loss for the Cadillac Lyric and 26% for the Chevy Equinox. How can you boost your range? Well, get an electric car with a heat pump. As you can see, it definitely makes a difference. Internal combustion engines can warm their cabins with the heat produced by their engine. EVs don't produce enough heat to warm the interior of the car. Heat pumps are an efficient way to produce heat while maintaining battery life, and EVs that use them can have 10% more range than those that don't. The other advantage, the other advantage is heat your seats. So if you get an electric car with heated seats, use your heated seats instead of your car heating. It's much more efficient you'll lose a lot less battery life doing it that way. So, you know, wear a jumper, wear some pants, wear a jacket and use your heated seats. And that's a, a good way to save on battery range. Of the vehicles with the heat pump, you can see here the Chevrolet Equinox and the Cadillac Lyric definitely underperformed their rivals. The Equinox maintains 76% of its range in cold weather. Lyric, 72%. And as I said before, this is strangely much lower than their rivals with heat pumps. Another concern, though, for potential EV buyers, as per Automotive News, is the impact of cold weather on charging. Newer EV batteries that are coming out of China can handle minus 10 degrees Celsius, minus 15, minus 20 degrees Celsius charging and have almost no impact. These newer batteries coming from various companies, CATL's new batteries, BYD's new batteries, uh, Geely's new batteries, have this technology in them, which is quite remarkable. However, EV batteries can't accept a charge, while well, ones from American cars anyway, when they're too cold, which sometimes makes for longer charging times. But manufacturers are trying to address this issue with newer models. Now, for example, my Xpeng G6, if you tell the car to preheat the battery because you're about to fast charge, then you can charge it quicker. I obviously live in Australia, so this is kind of irrelevant to me, unless I'm you know, driving up in the mountains it's really irrelevant to me 99.9% .9 of the time. But I know you guys in the United States and you guys in Europe, you this would be relevant to you because you do get pretty harsh winters. One of the things that most vehicles will do is when you set the charging station as a destination on the vehicle GPS, it will begin to precondition the battery. It's important to measure the impact of cold weather on EVs and not to just read these media reports of things like what happened in Chicago and assume that electric cars are not capable in the winter because they are. But it's worth remembering that um, you know internal combustion engine vehicles are also affected by the cold. There are effects, you know, the cold affects every electrical or petrol, gasoline, diesel-driven device. There's all kinds of different effects on their efficiency. To me, the number one result from this study has been that EV owners are able to make small adjustments in their driving habits to largely negate the effects of the cold, said the manager of the study. So the approximate percentage for EVs is of range loss is 20%. But if you get a Hyundai or a Tesla, you're looking at around only 12, around about 12 to 13% battery loss, which is really not very much. Remember though, I don't know if this is for NMC batteries or lithium ion phosphate batteries. Lithium ion phosphate batteries traditionally experience more range loss in the cold than NMC batteries. Now, all of Tesla's vehicles no longer use CATL's LFP or BYD's, I believe they didn't use those, so CATL's LFP batteries in America because those batteries don't qualify for EV incentives anymore. So they're all NMC now. However, older models and other models of cars in the United States do use LFP and that can, they can be affected in the cold. That said, the newer versions of LFP batteries that are currently or about to be manufactured or are currently just begin, have begun manufacturing in China have massive improvements in their cold weather performance. So these numbers will be very different in a few years time from today. Thanks for watching.